Something related to radians and trigonometry is something called arc length and sector area. I'm going to start off with the length of an arc. Now, what I'm going to mean here is that the length of an arc, L, is, uh, is uh, with a radius of R uh, that subtends an angle theta in radians. Now, what do I mean by subtend? I just mean that's the angle you get when you look at it. So I'm, I'm maybe it's going to help just to draw you this. So I'm going to draw some sort of piece right here, and I'm going to draw a piece like this, and we can go around in a circle. So this right here, if we considered your whole circle going all the way around like this right here, this would be a circle going all the way around, although I drew it really badly. But this right here would be a circle. Oh my god, it's a bad circle, isn't it? There we go. A little bit better. So if we had a circle of radius r, and we had this angle theta, now keep in mind this theta has got to be in radian. This is really important. This angle is not in degrees. Uh, then we can say, what's the length of this arc? In other words, this is, you know when I talked about how radians are awesome because they help you to know about distances you've traveled around? This is exactly why. Because if you know your angle is such and such radians, then you know how far you've walked. So we actually have a nice equation for all this. We have an equation that tells us all about this. It turns out the equation goes like this. It's just L equals R theta. So L is your length. That's your arc length. Now that could be in meters. Um, you could say that r is your radius of your circle. So that would also be in meters. And this right here is your angle, but it's written in radians. So if it's in radians, this works. If it's not in radians, then this doesn't work because you gotta have it in radians. So this is really nice because what this really tells you, it's, it's kind of like telling you well, what, what fraction of a whole circle have you walked around. So what if you walked around a whole circle? You know, what if you went, what if theta is two pi? Remember, two pi means all the way around. So if this is, here's the case, then you go all the way around. And you've gone all the way around, that means you've gone from here and gone all the way back like this right here. How far have you walked? What's your L? Well, your L is r times two pi because that's your angle. Your angle in this case is two pi radians. And the good news is that means it gives you two pi r. Do you remember this? This right here, that's your circumference of a circle. So this hopefully should make sense. It's actually all defined based on this. So this is actually circumference of a circle. So if you go all the way around it, no big surprise that the length you've traveled is what you're supposed to get. You're supposed to know that it's a circumference of a circle. You're supposed to get that. But this is the main equation right here. It goes like, this, or is it like that one? This is the one we need right here. This is the one. Okay, we need that one. Oh, I suppose now I just wrote over my nice letters here. Sorry. But in any case, this is how this works. So we can actually do an example of it. We can say, all right, what's the length of an arc subtended by an angle of 1 60th of a degree? And assume a radius of blah, 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 blah. Now this is the issue is that first of all we got to convert though because we're given something in degrees. I want to use this equation L equals R theta. I know the radius is some big number but I have to get theta. It's got to be in radians. See that? And they're being sneaky here. They're saying what's the length of an arc by an angle of this many degrees. So I got to convert. So step one is convert to, de uh, to radians. So let's do that. So I've got, um, let's see here. I've got one over 60 degrees. What do I want to multiply that by? Well, if you remember how to convert, you've got to know how many degrees and radians are related. I've got to get something that has degrees on the bottom. So I'm going to say 180 degrees over pi radians. Because remember, there's 180 degrees for every pi radians. If that's the case, this is always your, your conversion factor. It's either pi over 180 or 180 over pi. How do you know which one to put on top? Look at what you want to con cancel out. Do you want to get degrees on the top to disappear? That's why you got to put degrees on the bottom. You do it like this, then you're going to get, uh, let's see here, in this case, pi over 60 times 180. And we can actually calculate that. We can actually say that. So this is going to be pi divided by, that's going to be 60 times 180. So we're going to get, now that seems impossible, but that is just a really small angle, that's all. This is 2.9 times 10 to the 4. So now I know that my theta 
is then 2.9 times 10 to the minus 4 radians. A lot of people, when they look at this, they think they've done something wrong, because that doesn't look like uh, degrees. But you're right, it's not. It's in radians. And, it's, and it is really small, because think about it, it's 1 60th of a degree. Good luck drawing that. I mean, you've got to draw one degree. I mean, on a circle, let's say you try to draw a degree. You've got to take this thing right here and split it up into 360 even pieces. So that's a tiny little slice. Take that slice and split it up into 60 slices. And of course, it's going to be a really small amount. So that should hopefully make sense. This is really tiny. And now what do we do with that? Well, we take our answer now and we do the real thing with it. Now we actually find L. Or calculate L. I mean, not find, but calculate. Calculate L. So if we do that, then we use the equation. We say L equals R theta. So it equals, in this case, this big number, 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters times 2.9 times 10 to the minus 4 radians. So rad for short. And we get out our trusty calculator because we need that. So we're going to take this number and multiply it by 6. 37 times 10 to the 6. And I get finally an answer of 1852, or we could actually say it's pretty much 1, yeah, 1852 is good enough, I think. So this is 1852 meters. Or you could say this is 1.852 kilometers or something like that. Now, why did I do this crazy example? I thought it would actually be fun because this, it turns out, this is the definition of what we call a nautical mile. So if anybody's uh, out in a boat, for example, and you're supposed to travel a nautical mile, I wonder, how do I define that? And it turns out it's defined exactly as this. It's the arc length on Earth that represents an angle of one minute uh, of arc. Whoops, I shouldn't say one minute of arc minute. One minute of arc. This is how it works. It's just one minute of arc. So what this really means is that if you take your circle and you split it up into you know degrees, and let's just assume that this was one degree. I know it's not, but let's say say this was one degree. It's way smaller than that. And you split that up into you know sixty even slices. Let's see. So this right here will be this tiny little piece here that corresponds to that. That'll be this length right here. This is this length. And it turns out we know that length then. We know that one nautical mile. It turns out it's defined exactly as 1852 meters. Or you could say, or you could say it's 1.852 kilometers. So that's one nautical mile. And I don't mean nanometer here, so watch out, because some people use NM for nautical mile. But if you're in physics, you're probably doing nanometers here. So this is one nautical mile. So it's around 1.852 kilometers is how we define it. And this is really small. I mean, you imagine what you do is you take one degree and you split it up into 60 even pieces. Those are called minutes of arc. So that's why it's one arc minute is 1 60th of a degree. So this is actually how we define this. This is pretty cool. And we even have something called sector area, which is the area of a slice. Now, I really like this picture because you can sort of see it. this is like a slice of pizza. Right? This is a slice of a whole circle. This is a piece of it. This would be the area of this piece of pizza here. That would be, how do you find that area? How do you do that? And we have a way of doing it, it turns out. So this is, like I said, it's the area of a slice. So I'll draw that. I'll draw a nice circle here like this, and like that. And here's my R, and here's my slice, and here I'm finding the area of that. That's my area that I'm trying to find here. So it all depends on your angle, doesn't it? It depends on what angle you've actually looked at here. So if I do an angle that's theta, then away I go. I can just define it based on theta, and away I go. Now, the way we define it, it's actually really cool. In this case right here, we can actually work out where it comes from. So the area is going to be, um, well, what's the area of a whole circle? What's the area of an entire circle? Do you remember that? It's pi r squared. That, I'm going to label that. That's the area of an entire circle. So the area of a circle is this. So going all the way around in a circle, the entire area of a circle is pi r squared. But here we're saying basically what fraction of it are we doing? So that's why we're actually going to do something that we call the, yeah, I'm going to say the fraction of the whole circle. 
So here we're going to consider, well, what fraction of the whole circle am I getting? Do I have half of it? Then I'm going to say this is 1 over 2, and so on. And a nice easy way to do it is to write it like this. You can actually say it's theta over 2 pi. This is how you can do it, because if your angle, remember this is in radians. Remember, that's in radians, that's your angle. By the way, back here again, theta is in radians, remember. Theta is in radians, you can't forget that. Okay, Theta is in radians, your angle is in radians. So is in sector area, your angle is also in radians. This is why we say if it was half of this, then this would be 1 over 2, and so on, and away we'd go. So you can actually figure out sort of what fraction of the wheel of the circle are you actually doing. So sort of what, what fraction are you getting? Well, we can actually work that out because if we look at this number, then we can actually just start calculating things here. We've got this, which is pi r squared times theta over 2 pi. I don't know if you see this, but the pi's actually cancel out. So now we have a equals, and I'm just going to write it out just clear just so you can see everything. Okay, it's pi r squared theta over 2 pi. Well, the pi's cancel out. So I have a equals, and I'm just going to write a 1 half here first. And instead of saying r squared theta, I'm just going to write the theta first. I hope that's okay. I'm just going to say theta r squared. So this is the equation for sector area. This is how we do it. So we can calculate then the area of any slice. It is just this. This is the equation you need for it. Oops. I guess I need this piece. There we go. So um, what I'm going to do then, I'm just going to put it in what? This one right here maybe. Just said this is the really important one here. Like this. this is the one that we are going to need to use. So we're going to use that one right there quite a bit. So area is 1 half theta r squared, where theta again is in radians. Now we can actually do an example then. We can actually do that. So let's say we have an angle of 210 degrees and r is 5 centimeters. What's the area? Again, you might think, oh, I know what to do. I just put in my values and away I go. I guess a lot of people get excited. They're like, oh yeah, I know what to do. I do a equals 1 half times theta times r squared. But what did we just say about theta? Theta has to be in radians. So if theta is in radians and they gave it to you degrees, guess what? You've got to convert to degrees first. Damn it. So you've got to go 110 degrees. And how do I convert this? I've got to know something in degrees and something in radians. It's either pi radians over 180 degrees or 180 degrees over pi radians. Which one do I put on the bottom? It's the one that undoes degrees. So I've got to put 180 degrees on the bottom those will cancel each other out. That means this is pi radians. Because of that, then I have uh, this. I have then that it's uh, 280, sorry, 210 pi over 180, which is going to be, I can say 210 times pi, divide that by 180, and I can get an answer. Let's see here, what is this? This is 3.66, so let's say, let's say this is 3.67 radians. So 3.67 radians, that's what I need here. So it's about 3.67 radians. It's approximately, now this one isn't exact, this one's approx. So it's about this. That's really nice because now I can fill it in and actually do the answer. So I got half of 3.67 times my radius, which is 5, and I'm going to square that. So I'm going to take then my answer here, which I just had, which is this. I'm going to multiply that by... 5 squared, which is 25. I'm going to take that answer and divide it by 2, because there's a half there. And I get 45.8. So my answer then is going to be A equals 45.8, in this case, centimeters squared. That's how I can solve it. So I can find the area of this slice. That I just found was the area of this piece right here. This, this piece right here is this many centimeters squared.